Hey Sparkers, today we're going to cover recording audio in PreSonus Studio One. So we're going to go over installing PreSonus, we're going to go over making sure you have the USB driver uh, working properly to connect to your Spark, uh, we're going to install it and verify that you can uh, see this input source as, uh, as the Spark, uh, validate that you can create a couple of tracks and that will get you started for recording audio with PreSonus Studio One, and I uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, we're gonna start off by downloading Studio One 5. So these, this is the link here, it's shop.presonus.com slash studio dash one dash five dash prime. It's free software, so uh, that's nice. We're gonna add this to the cart. And I'm already logged in, but if you're not logged in, you could create a new account here. So let's go over to proceed to checkout. And then it's gonna generate a download link for us. And, we're, and you're just gonna go ahead and click on this. And it downloads. Download installer right here. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and launch this. There we go, it's done. So we'll open that. We'll say yes. English. Next. I agree. Oh, sorry. Let's read this real quick. Okay, I agree. Install in your preferred location. This should be pretty quick. And there we go, it's now installed. So next up, we will go ahead and make sure we have the correct USB drivers to get our Spark amp connected. Okay, next up, we are going to go ahead and download the USB driver uh, to connect our Spark. So we're just gonna go to positivegrid.com spark, and we're going to go to support. So I'll just scroll a little bit down here and it's under support. And then under usage, uh, down here in this section, the, the bottom link here is the Spark Windows ASIO driver. Um, and I think both drivers are actually contained in here. There's, there's a Mac OS X driver here. So let's go ahead and click on this. And I think under here it says Mac OS X. They look like they're exactly the same to me. Uh, but I'm running this on all Windows machines. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click here. Oh, let's, sorry, download. And this will take a couple of seconds and it'll download. And I'll go ahead and open this up and I'm going to do extract all and I'm going to use the same location. This will open a new folder and there we go. There's our extracted software. So I'll go ahead and double click on this. It'll launch the installation and welcome to the positive grid USB audio device driver setup. Go ahead and click next install in your preferred location. And this will take a couple of seconds to run. And we click next and finish. To complete the driver installation, you must disconnect and reconnect your device. So uh, at this point, uh, if you ha already had your device connected, uh, you're gonna wanna reconnect it. But uh, next up, we will go ahead and connect the sp uh, Spark to the computer and it should detect it. Okay, so we are now going to connect the USB from the positive grid Spark to the computer. This will be a very brief demonstration. Hopefully most people know how to do this already, but this is the USB cable that came with the Spark. So it's got a, the bigger, you know, kind of square shaped connector on one side and the standard USB connector on the other. So this side goes on the Spark, this side goes on the computer. So let's go ahead and connect on the back of the spark first. So that just goes in just like that. And I have it, as you can see, it's off right now. I'll turn that on in a second. And then on your computer, hopefully you have a free USB port. Just plug that in like that. And my computer just made a little dinging noise. So that means I know it worked. So uh, next up, we are going to launch the Studio One software and hopefully the spark is detected. All right, so we have uh, connected the Spark amp to the computer. We've installed the software, we've installed the drivers. So now I'm gonna turn the Spark on. 
it is on. And just to verify that it works, I'm going to go ahead and launch. Oh no, this is the setup. Sorry, I don't need to launch. I'm going to install or launch Studio One. It's my first time launching it, so it may take a second here, but I am not seeing it launch yet. There it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and accept this license agreement. Read that real quick. And we're going to put our username and password in. So you already created an account earlier when you downloaded the software. It's going to sign us in, activate the product, and we will do welcome to authorize for this computer. We're going to run Studio One Prime, which is the limited free version. And that's the Spark is actually the uh, computer output device right now. Uh, so we're now active. So this is going to launch. Install from PreSonus account. Install to, yep, recommended installation. Yep, that's all good. Space required, space available. All right, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and install. So this will take a couple of minutes to download all this, depending on your internet speed and uh, all that good stuff, how active these servers are. But we'll go ahead and let this run. And in a couple of seconds, we'll come back uh, once this is all done. Okay, so the software and the additional packages just completed downloading and it's now prompting me to go ahead and restart studio one so we'll go ahead and say yes and we'll restart that and now it has launched and as you can see here right in the middle it's detecting the spark um, positive grid usb audio device that's good sign that means that uh it's working as a DAW and it's seeing the Spark as an interface. So that's what we want to see. And um, I'll do a little bit more of a tutorial or walkthrough a little bit later on on how to do some basic recording. But for now, I just wanted to show you that this is operational. So we're going to go ahead and launch this as a new song. And we'll just verify that it's detecting the sound from my guitar through the Spark. Um, and so I'm just going to leave everything default here and say OK. Sample rate does not match audio device configuration. That's fine. So um, we can always adjust the sample rate a little bit later. But now we can verify that it is detecting the guitar. OK, so when you're recording, you're going to want to make sure that the the output is not going through the positive grid spark amp just because what will happen is you'll hear it as you're playing it as an output uh it's 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 kind of it's it's a little hard to follow but i'll show you what i mean here in a second so i'm go to song and then go to song setup and you're going to want to make sure that under output that these are not selected while you're recording because it'll it'll sort of do this weird feedback you'll hear your initial recording and then it'll, it'll be playing through the interface the studio one and then it'll play back out through the spark so there's going to be this weird sounding delay and it's not going to be it's not going to be recorded that way. It's only going to record the initial input, um, but you're going to be hearing the playback of the recording as you're recording it, if that makes sense. Uh, so make sure that this is off while you're doing the recording or you have it going out to uh, headphones, perhaps. Uh, so if you have a headphone connected to this thing, that, that would be OK, too. But again, if you have those headphones connected, you're going to hear both this initial input source and you're going to hear the output of the software as well. So I just turn it off while I'm recording. And we're going to go ahead now and add the track back. And you're going to want to do an instrument track. And you can do mono or stereo, whatever your preference is. Uh, sorry, not instrument track, an audio track. And I'm going to do stereo. And I'm going to enable, you press this little circle to enable it for recording. And I'm going to make sure I'm at the beginning of the timeline here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit record. And now I'm going to tap on my guitar. Let's see. Let's just... It's probably out of tune, apologize for that, but you can see that it came in. I'm going to stop this here. You can see that it heard, um, it picked up the input right there. And if I go backwards and if I play it back right now, I'm not going to actually hear anything because if you recall, we 
deselected those audio outputs. I'm just going to play this and you're not going to hear anything. Even once we get to that point where uh, I started playing, uh, you're not going to hear anything. So it's, it almost feels like, you know, oh, what, what happened? Nothing happened. But if I go back into song and I go song setup and I select these outputs again and I apply that. Now, if I go back here and play this, let's move this playhead a little bit. There you go. There's those awful uh, detuned notes there. So, so selecting that output um, will mean that you can now hear, and I can I can play right now and hear it, and I'm hearing it twice because again, it's the input source and then it's playing back uh, through the the interface. So, um, you know, that's why you hear this weird doubling. It almost sounds like a chorus effect. But if I turn this off again. As the output, now you're only going to hear the the actual output of the the uh, spark. So it's kind of interesting. The oh, I didn't pl apply that. So now that's just the the output of my spark amp. Another way to do that would have been to you know turn the the output volume all the way down on the spark amp. Um, you know then you don't have that issue, but. Uh, for me, it's best to just leave these outputs off when I'm recording. It, it just kind of keeps things simple. And it's easy to toggle this back and forth. So there's the basics. There's uh, verifying that you're getting your signal in, in as, a, as a track. Um, I'll do a little bit more of a walkthrough later on how you might want to configure this. If you want, you know, things like stereo versus um, mono, um, uh, you know, uh, that sort of a thing, and then outputting the, the track output. But this is this is the basics of making sure that you're recording into your DAW. Now that we've verified that the input source works, I'm just going to show you a little bit about how adding tracks works. Um, and just so you know, uh, the input for the Spark to any DAW, uh, whether it's uh, PreSona Studio One or Pro Tools or Audition or uh, name your, you know, uh, your audio software. Uh, it's only going to come in as a mono uh, input. Uh, it's kind of a little bit confusing because, you know, the Spark is technically a stereo amp, but that's only for the output. So the speakers and the headphone. As a input source, it's only sending a, you know, single mono track. You can sort of get around that by having it come in twice as an input, and then you can do some creative stuff in post with, like putting one of those inputs on a left channel uh, or panning it all the way to the left rather and putting the other one all the way on the right or not even all the way on the right and all the way on the left. If you want to put them, you know, maybe 10% to the left and the other one 10% to the right, then you have a little bit of a stereo effect. Um, but it's not true stereo. So that's just something important to know. And I'll show you kind of how that works real quick. If we do, let's go to song and song setup. And I'm just going to remove these two inputs real quick. And so this is as if there were no inputs set up in the first place. If you add a mono track, it'll you know say M right here, and it's a single input, right? That that's a just a standard input mono track. If you try to add a stereo track, uh, what it does is it it forces you to the left left channel, <laughs> really, uh, which is essentially, you know, it's the same channel. It's going to sort of double that same channel when you see the tracks here. So I'll show you that in a second, but. It's really not technically a stereo channel. So, but I'm gonna hit apply here. So now we have two input sources and I'm gonna add uh, a track as a mono track. And what's nice about this is it automatically selects that first input since that was a mono track. And then I'm gonna also add a stereo track and it automatically selected that second input, which was a stereo track, right? Um, again, these are, these are both the same input source. So it's just the one signal. Um, but again, the, this is, you can do two mono tracks from the same, uh, you know, this, an, a single input source from the spark. And, you know, that's probably the simplest way to do it. And then later on pan them left and right. Uh, but, um, right now these <clears throat> are not enabled for input. So as if I'm playing, you don't see any, uh, gain meter here, but if I just, uh, select this guy here, now they're both enabled for input. So you can see the, uh, the gain meter jump in there. Um, so now if I were to record, it's gonna record both of these tracks at the same time. So I'll just do a quick little, oh, let's not do it from there. 
let's do it from the beginning. We'll hit record and we'll just do. And then we'll go ahead and stop that. And so again, I have the output disabled right now. So if I turn this on, let's go to the outputs. Oh, it is actually on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's because <laughs> so I have I still have my positive grid, obviously uh, Spark connected to the computer, but I turned the the music volume all the way down. So the music volume is you know it's like the aux track or the Bluetooth uh, input, right? So when you when you have that all the way down, whatever it's connected to, in this case my computer as the audio source, it's not going to hear that. So you didn't hear that doubling effect. That's another way you. I think I might have mentioned that before, but you can eliminate that doubling effect and still have the spark as your output device um, by turning that volume all the way down. If I were to have that volume up as I was recording, you would have heard that doubling. But I'm turning it up a little bit now, so that way when I play this back, you'll hear it. Oh, that's loud. There, that's a little better. Start it again. Um, so now, uh, basically, that that's really what I wanted to share uh, for how these tracks work. This is the stereo track here, uh, and it's literally just a duplicate of the same input signal. This is the mono track. You see it just the once. Again, you can kind of play around with this and see what you like. Uh, I personally like to just do two mono input tracks and then again pan them left or right you know if I want to sort of emulate a stereo effect um, but really this is the gist of the way the tracks work I'm not going to go into a full-blown tutorial of how to use you know PreSonus Studio One or or any other DAW at least not at the moment but for now this will get you started um, you have uh, one more quick little tip is you have these um, gain meters here so you can control the the amount of gain coming in on these tracks when you're playing them back. So this is more for mixing later on. Uh, and then, you know, you can also pan them here. This is where you would do panning, right? Uh, so if I wanted to pan one on one side and pan the other on the other side, the output would, you know, sound like a stereo effect. So, uh, yeah, that's the gist. And hopefully this helps get you rocking for, um, for whatever you want to record. Uh, this is going to be used also to help people figure out how to record for the... Uh, uh, the joint effort we're doing with Florent uh, on the Spark collaboration. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps and enjoy.